We're going to go through uh, a step-by-step -step breakdown of each segment of the frog and the mapping system, and we're going to do it in sequences that are very specific and and uh, oriented to each segment of the frog and the widest part of the foot and how to achieve uh, a goal, your goals of finding the widest part of the foot through the frog. The first step we're going to cover is marking the uh, last segment of this central sulcus of the frog and if you look closely you'll see that there's a defined V that is created by the last segment of that central sulcus. I'm going to clean it just a little bit, just enough so I can establish where that mark is. But take my marker, I'll make a little mark right there. And then I'll draw just a little mark on each side. Don't draw a line all the way across, just enough to where you can see it outside. Because what this represents, it's a part of the anatomy that gives us the best information to find the rest of the internal structures, as well as the external structures, like the location of the heel. It can tell us, because the most, lot, some people will call this the widest part of the frog, and in reality, in many cases, it is. So trimming to this part, with heels trimming back to this part, gives us a reference as to where we can trim the heels. It also tells us where the heels exist at this point in time, before we trim them. And if you look at a line across there, you can see the relationship between this position and this position. I'm going to show you how to find the true apex of the frog. It gives us a reference to where the widest part of the foot is. And it's very important that you go through this uh, in a very assertive way. I'm going to very, I'm just going to virtually just cut the tip of that frog off. I've cut at it from this direction and from this direction. Now, if you look at it real closely, you'll see that there's still a margin around that apex of the frog. You notice that it's also very pointed. The true apex will have more of a rounded surface to it. Often these things get stretched and pulled. So it's important, to, in order to use this as a reference to find the widest part of the foot, that you make some, have clarity with where that true apex comes out of the sole. The next step is to take a cut with your knife around that. Okay. The information that you're going to gain from this is twofold. It's going to tell you whether the frog is distorted by how pointed it is. It's also going to tell you how much extra sole you have in, uh, on the bottom of this foot. If it's very shallow and close to the surface of this, of the ground surface of the sole, you can be assured that there's not much sole depth or much sole that has to be removed. If you look at this, there's still a black line around the apex of, the, of what I've established as the apex right now. And what I need to do is eliminate enough of that sole frog margin so that it all blends together with just enough clarity of difference between the soft tissue and the hard tissue of the sole. If you look at it real close now, there's a little white line right there. You see that? That means that you see also how just with a little bit more pairing of the frog, this apex has now started to round out. That's exactly the purpose in, in what we're doing here. It was long and skinny, it still was stretched, and with a little bit more work, I found that, sure enough, this apex was elongated clear out to here. Now it's back a quarter of an inch. And these are the issues that are very important to finding the widest part of the foot, because if you're off a quarter of an inch here, you're going to be off a quarter of an inch here, and then everything, the whole foot, the whole foot in how you trim it is going to have some differences that aren't going to be accurate. So good clarity with this is very important. You may have to take a little bit of the sole, a little bit of the sole, but most importantly, I want you to take the apex of the frog. Okay. Now that I've got the back of the central sulcus established and I've got a fairly clear sense of where the tip of the apex of the frog is, I'm going to mark the heels because the next step in line is to be able to recognize distortions on the bottom of the foot. We're not going to be able to know exactly how much distortion there is in the front part of the foot. However, in the first appearance, it appears to be very straight. That tells me that there's probably not too much distortion, especially up at the top part here. You should notice that it's fairly straight and in line with the whole rest of the hoof capsule. But the thing that you want to watch and do is make a mark here at the highest part of the heel. And you may have to kind of feel that. It's oftentimes they roll off a little bit here in the back. But you want the last bearing surface that's on the ground. And this appears to be it. 
So I'm going to make a couple of marks. I'm not going to mark up the foot anymore until I, until I get it exfoliated, but you can get kind of a picture of the relationship between that heel position and this back mark back here. Now the length of the central sulcus is right about here. So you see where that lies in half, nearly halfway between this part and this part. If you call half of that distance, if you can make kind of assimilate it right now, then you can see that these heels are probably the part of the foot that is most distorted. The bars have a s subtle curve to them. It's a little bit more. There's a slight fracture to this bar right here, a little bit of a fracture right here. So that means that the bars are trying to get broken away. They also have some curvature to them. That, that may coincide with the position of this heel underneath. So those, those are the things that we're going to recognize straight away. The next step is to exfoliate the foot to get a picture of the true depth of the sole. This, this horse is going to be barefo barefooted, so we're going to be somewhat conservative about how much we eliminate. We're going to take exfoliate the bars until these black lines disappear. That's generally the procedure there. And we're going to just make, take away whatever flaky stuff will come away quite easily. We're fortunate enough to have a soft enough foot here. It doesn't, it's not always that way. But anything that has a crack in it like this is trying to loosen itself up to be eliminated. So we're only going to take away what's, what comes away easily in this barefoot horse. If we were going to shoe this horse, we'd be a little more assertive probably in taking away and it down to where it was actually waxy. If, but a barefooted horse, we're just going to get rid of whatever is cracked through here. And we can get a little bit better picture of where the bars actually terminate now. In this region of the foot, we will make it waxy. It's important that you get that reference. It's going to give you a picture of where the arc of the sole is, number one. It's also going to be able to give you references to medial lateral balance because the coffin bone is equal distance below this. So I'm going to draw a line around the junction of the sole wall there, sole wall there. I'm going to remark the apex of the frog that I've established. Okay. I'm going to draw a line down the top of the bars and you can see right here there's a bit of a bulge. On both sides you can see it. There's a fairly straight line in the back part and it tends to bulge right there. You can see this growth line right there. And you can see this one here tends to terminate right there. There's a bit of a bulge in the sole right there. Those are, those are if you haven't got decent bars or bars evident enough to look, to, to guide you down through this line right here, you look next to the frog in the commissure for a inward deviation. And at that highest part, it will tell you where these bars are determined to terminate. Now what, we've, what we have now is we have three references. We have the apex of the frog, one inch back from that, as you can see here, is one of those indicators. Where the bars terminate is the other indicator. And where the apex of this arc is, is the other indicator. And generally, these three indicators will line up on the same tangent. So I'm going to make a little mark one inch back from the apex of the frog, right there. Where the bars terminate is a small mark there. This one terminates there. And I'll use my rasp in line with the frog. If you slide the rasp sideways, exactly parallel to that line, the last visible part of that mark that you've made on the sole wall junction is what you use. Mark this side. The last visible part. If you have a section here and a section there, halfway between it, we'll get it. Okay, just connect the dots and generally they all line up together. Again, we've started with the, this part, the, the, the dimple in the back of the frog. We've established the true apex of the frog by cleaning it out vis vigorously and also by using the method to the widest part of this hole. Ready? 